thank Kentucky State and Coach Jackson and their team and being with them last night at dinner. Um, it was really a great experience. PG Peoples was there. Um, Coach Rav gave an unbelievable talk. Um, you know, uh, I think, you know, more than just the game, doing this to bring them together with us was pretty good. Um, I just, I was asking, I, Z was supposed to warm up with us and he practiced with us yesterday. He had a great shoot around today. He ate. This kid's got like buzzard luck, he got food poisoning. So where is he? He said he had got sick and the doctor told him to go back to the lodge. So, but he's doing better. Um, practice, it was nice, the people that were there watching us. Um, it's nice to have uh, him back. Today's game, um, you know, you, you as fast as we're playing, um, you know, to have 25 or whatever assists on 37 baskets and have only really four or five turnovers, probably less. It, you know, that means that guys can handle it, guys can pass it, they can catch it. We got, we got a bunch of pretty good basketball players. Um, I just like the fact that they shared it. In this kind of game, what happens is try, guys just lose their mind, and they didn't. They played the way we're trying to play. They know we got tough games coming up. Uh, New Mexico State, they're good. I mean, watching tape of them too, oof. I mean, they took some of their kids from Sam Houston, and they make shots, so it's going to be a hard one there for us. But this was a good tune up. They're off tomorrow. We practice Saturday. We do something on Sunday and get ready to play Monday. Questions? Uh, Cal, two exhibitions, blue white game, about a month of practice. What is the number one thing this team needs to get better at that maybe you didn't know at the beginning of all that, or maybe you saw it throughout the. The Georgetown game was a great thing for us to get bumped around and not block out, not go body to body. So that's all we've been doing. We're doing three and four things a day where they got to go body to body. I thought they did some good stuff today. Uh, some of the guys' motors are not where they need to be. So we're going to have to do some conditioning with a couple of these guys because they go three times up and down the floor and they can't breathe. And we're training, we're practicing, we're going two hours and 20 minutes with no subs. So, I mean, we just, there were a couple guys, it was, I can remember PJ Washington. We had to do extra training to get him to lose some weight. We got a couple guys like that. I thought Trey played with more of a motor today than he has played with. Um, in our guard play, you know, last game I said, DJ, you can't end a game with one assist. You can't do it. And so he has seven. We talked to him about cutting. He cuts. I mean, they listen. Robert Dillingham's playing. He missed every shot today, but they were all good shots. And there was, he made one or two plays that were ridiculously hard, look easy. They were like really hard plays that he just made a play like, what did he just do? And he made it look easy. So Justin's getting better, you know, still too hard on himself. I've had guys like that. Derrick Rose was that way. Too hard on yourself, man. You're playing good. Started the game driving. First half, I told him, we love layups. We like threes. First half, they gave us things at the basket. Uh, we scored 40 that way out of the 50. Second half, they, they packed it and we got threes. Well, then you shoot threes. Um, Antonio made shot. It was good. It was good to see. Well, Coach, you guys are obviously bigger, stronger, faster, and quicker. I guess it has to be an embarrassment of riches. How much can you appreciate having that kind of advantage? No, we, um, you know, a lot of games we're playing, we're trying to play against ourselves. So we, it, whether it was Kentucky State or whoever it is, we're playing against ourselves. How good can we play together? How random, like you saw today, can we play that way? Um, how fast can we run up and down the court to put them on their heels? We did a lot of that today. So like I told them at halftime and I told them prior to the game and I told them after, we were playing against ourselves not out of disrespect for Kentucky State, 
That's what you're supposed to do. I can imagine being forced to play small ball can be really tough at times, but what pleased you the most by rotation tonight? Well, um, playing Justin at four, um, you know, what, what the role I'm talking to a do about is be a finisher. When that ball comes to you, whether it's a jump shot or a drive for a basket, don't need you to be a play starter. So now, if you have it and you throw it, run into something where you end up being free for the play. That's what he did today. I mean, I like it again where you have, you know, like six guys, six guys taking nine or more shots. I mean, every they're sharing. It's, you know, you're talking about every one of these kids were the guy and they're sharing. So Adu being that finisher for us, um, he's good and he made free throws. They missed some, but he shot 70% from the line. Uh, get fouled, get to the line. He's strong, he's, he's, you know, he literally could be one of the best finishers in the country. Coach, what do you like best about having DJ as starting at point? I know it's it's positionless in a lot of ways, but what do you what do you like best about him there as opposed to being off the ball? Well, here's how he's off the ball: hit somebody and cut like crazy, and the ball finds you. Just does. I don't know. You know, that's like a karma of basketball. Um, but he also. He talks like he is a senior. And I coached his dad. His dad did not talk. Like he just played and scored and, you know, he, but he wasn't a talker. This guy runs us. He's looking at players. He's moving them around. Um, I also like Rob off the ball because when they're not 10 eyes looking at him, there's four eyes or six, he's getting some. He'll get a basket. Um, so, those two, and I told Robert today, you know, should he be starting? Yeah, it could be. You know, Shea should have started. Devin should have started. I can go right down the line of guys, Emmanuel quickly, you know, when they had to work their way in. And I just told him, everybody that watches you play right now loves how you're playing because he's not messing with the ball. He's just getting baskets, getting to the – again, how many assists did he have today? Six. Six assists, no turns. And he missed every shot. Still played good. Thought we took too many chances defensively trying to steal some. And I, you know, I think most of those were in the second half, but. John, hey, uh, I saw that, I guess, during the pregame radio show, you, you'd mentioned to uh, Kentucky State that maybe you didn't want them to do zone. You just haven't had much time to focus on that with your team yet. How big of an issue is that going to be for you guys this weekend if you had it Monday? Um, I don't know because I haven't watched that much tape, and I'm going to have to watch some Sam Houston tape to see if he's played zone. Um, but if you watch this in Toronto, we were a great zone offensive team because we put Trey in the middle and we put shooters around him. We even had some high-low stuff, so we're fine. Um, tomorrow was going to be our zone day, nothing but zone, both on defense and offense. And they reminded me they have an off day tomorrow. So it's going to have to be at some point on Saturday. But Sunday's got to be a normal day before the game practice. You can't go two, three hours. We're going to have a hard game. John, you said talk about DJ trying to get him to cut more. Justin Edwards said at media day that you're on him to cut more as well. Young guys like that, do they not know that? Did they not have to do that in high school? And how much technique is there into just into cutting? Um, what I would tell you is that um, every one of these kids always had the ball. So by always having the ball, they don't cut. In other words, they make a play and then they throw it to you and see what you're going to do. And that's something that they, it's a habit that they do. Let me tell you what happened to start the game. I've been on Justin about offensive rebounding. I don't care where you are on the floor, go rebound because of what you can do. And the second thing is 
straight line drives, get to the rim. So to start the game, he was five for five driving the ball. And so that's why the game started the way it did. I told him, we're not going to start the game shooting all threes. We're not doing that. And, uh, you know, we only took eight threes at half, but it's because of the way the game was. And then in the second half, you take, what, 17? But that's what they gave us. So you kind of roll with it that way. A couple more. John, you shot the ball well again tonight. Uh, I asked you this the other night, but I didn't really understand your, your answer, so I was hoping you could expound. Who are the guys on the team? Can you name the ones who had the green light to shoot? Um, DJ, Rob, I'll be honest with you, Reed, Antonio, Trey, if he's open, and basically even like a do, I thought, passed up a couple jumpers to get to the rim. And I'm not going to tell him not to do that, but in a, a game with maybe some bigger players, you're going to have to take that jumper. But this is one of those teams, like Shea said, watching us in Toronto, every guy can pass, dribble, and shoot. So you, it leads you to play a little different, you know, uh, what we're running. And we were random some of the time. And you have to admit, it, it was like, wow. We were random. We had great pace. You know, we got to the next action, so that you know what what you're trying to do is make the decision, make the defense make decisions. How many decisions can you make them make? Well, if you're only dancing with the ball and then shooting, there are no decisions to make. But if you do a dribble handoff, if you do a pass and a cut and a swing and a kickback, they're making eight, ten decisions. Somebody's going to screw up. That's randomness of the the game of what we're trying to do so we have a lot of guys that if they don't uh, shoot open threes or open shots you know i don't want them to just that's their game but i do want them to shoot it you've used that word a couple times now tonight random and in talking about the offense and guys cutting and moving so from your perspective i guess how can you get them to be random and, and how like, can you intentionally teach that how much do you have to have your hands off the product for that to be the end result well so some of it is um, getting them started like doing action so that the ball moves and there's some penetration and cutting and then it becomes random um, what you saw against Georgetown is we stood. So now you're trying to make it random, you have nowhere to go. But now we're cutting and opening up gaps to go. Um, so it's, what I want them to do is play off of one another, um, get to the next action. We're a good shooting team, so we're gonna shoot. But you don't wanna live and die with the three. You want it to be at the rim, you want to draw fouls, and then you're looking, I like threes. I love layups and something at the rim and getting fouled, and this should be a great free throw shooting team. Last one second round. With the return of Antonio Reeves, where do you think he has improved at from this season compared to last season? Biggest thing is his self-confidence, and it's not what we're doing, it's what he is. He is so much more at ease. He talks so much more. Um, when you walk into this program, it is difficult. And there's a ton of anxiety. Am I good enough? What's going on? Every team you play, like even Kentucky State made shots to start this game, like everybody does against us. And so that was hard. Uh, finding his way within that team was hard. Um, but by the end of the year, he was really an effective player. Now he's more physical. Now he'll mix it up. Now he talks more on defense. And offensively, you know, he's figured out how do I get to the rim some. He's way better than he was a year ago. I mean, he was a good player last year, but it, his confidence in himself right now you know, he's self-assured. He doesn't make, uh, we, we did, where we, maybe it was the first game. He missed shots and then came out in the second half and made shots. Last year, that never happened. If he missed seven, he was missing 13. Now he'll miss shots and come back and have enough confidence that 
It's not phasing me. I'm going to make this next one. I'm going to make the next one. And that's how he's played.